So in this video, I'm going to go through with you the audio that was presented by Sky Sports um, for that free practice session where Max Verstappen and Lance Stroll had that collision um, and compare that with what they said at Silverstone. Just while I'm on this screen, uh, some of you will have seen the video I've just put out earlier today regarding the new change.org uh, petition that I want you to all sign. Within that petition, um, well, within that presentation, I uh, inform you, I explain to you that Autosport did a article uh, back in January or just after January um, where they claim that the results of this new uh, ICA ruling meant that Mercedes uh, would have lost any appeal that they'd have continued with a further appeal about Abu Dhabi. Complete lies. I break that down in a video. I'll put a link to that video in the um, in the description to this one. Well worth watch. I think I start singing in that one. Um, but you'll see that this is the level of corruption. Sky Sports are the ones that are contracted by Liberty Media to present the Liberty Media narrative. And yet we've still got the BBC's Andrew, Andrew Benson that should be independent, that presents the same narrative and doesn't expose the truth. And we've got Autosport that should also be independent, reporting independently about motorsport. And they are complying with the same narrative. It's a, it's a media narrative. And people say, oh, that's just a conspiracy theory. Why, why are they all saying the same thing? And that same thing is wrong. Why are none of these so-called professionals within the industry that should have expertise and knowledge about the sport, presenting something that is proven to be wrong. This is where you need to start opening your minds and realising that it is a narrative. OK, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to play the audio through through. Um, I've what I've done I've recorded the audio because if I, otherwise it will get blocked because the image will be showing so I've already recorded that you're just going to see a blank screen effectively um, and I'll break that down as to what is being spoken about remember Silverstone 40 minutes after the incident you have Sky Sports vilifying Sir Lewis Hamilton you have the experts Brundle, Crofty blaming it on Hamilton you then get Damon Hill Jensen Button, Karun Chandok, blaming it on Lewis Hamilton. You get Ted Kravitz in the pits saying, oh, and Helmut Marco is here down in the pit lane and he's calling for Lewis Hamilton to be suspended for a race. You have Christian Horner and the radio message presented by F1 TV going, uh, that, that's just not acceptable. Um, no, Everybody knows you don't put a wheel up the inside at Max. That could have... Uh, you know, that could have, it didn't say could have killed him, but, you know, that could have had severe consequences. You know, we, 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 we demand that something must be done about this. Right. And then you get Jonathan Wheatley's message to Massey, also broadcast to the world by F1 TV. Uh, uh, Michael, uh, we're very cross about this. Um, yeah, everybody knows you don't put a wheel up the inside at that corner. So you, you've got all this presented to the world, vilifying Lewis Hamilton. You then have Sky Sports making a presentation where Kravitz interviews Horner after the event. And Horner gives it the old, everybody you don't know you don't pull a wheel up the inside at cops. Oh, that was a 51G accident. That was a 51G accident. That was a 51G accident. And uh, Max ended up in hospital and he celebrated. You know, this is the incitement after that incident. That incident where Lewis Hamilton had almost made it entirely alongside Verstappen, and we compare that with an incident where Verstappen barely let's 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 give him the benefit of the doubt, just makes it halfway alongside Stroll. Okay, just makes it halfway. So Hamilton is in a far more greater position where his justification for actually having the inside line, the right to that inside line of the corner. Hamilton has that. Verstappen, it's arguable whether he has it or not. With that in mind, let's listen to how Sky Sports talk about 
the Verstappen incident with Stroll. Let's have a listen. Oh, Stroll, here comes Max Verstappen as Perez goes is 10th it, yeah. fastest. Is that DRS as effective as Max wants it? Oh, no, 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 no. they're going to crash. And they have. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Lance Stroll is off into the gravel after tangling now with Max Verstappen. And this might be one that the stewards are going to have to sort out. I mean, Lance must have known he was there, and um, Max was at the inside. Yeah. Lance must have known he was there. Did anybody say Max must have known Lewis was there at Silverstone? Because Max did know Lewis was there at Silverstone. Max was weaving along that straight, pushing Lewis closer to that wall. They would have seen Lewis alongside of him when that front wing of Lewis's car was almost level with the front wing of Max's car. You will see that in your peripheral vision. You know he's there. You're checking your mirrors. You're racing. It's your job to know where your opponent is when you're racing like that. Did anybody say Max would have known Lewis was there? I don't recall that. Yeah, Max just assumed that he would let him go because I guess Lance had just finished his lap. Oh, but Max just assumed something. You can't blame Max. Max would have assumed something. It's another red flag. Wow. Well, we're all learning about Turn 1. Well, you, you wanted to know how effective was the DRS? What was it like for overtaking? Tell you what, Paul, if it's going to end up like that occasionally, we, we, I might agree with Anne. We'll, we'll, we'll oh, this here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's down to a little, little backtrack there. But, but, but how... how all right, I, I'll, I'll ask you. How silly was that incident? It, it just seemed a little unnecessary, but... Let's have another. How silly was it? Not... Oh, he nearly killed him! How silly was it? Look, so it's a bit of an assumption. For, look, you see the, the, the battery kick in here because Max has charged it and both, that's why he's catching. And then the battery, the battery time does its thing, it's run out, and then you're just sitting there. But I think he felt, I think he felt that he was going to let, it was a, assuming he was going to let him by. I don't think you could really blame Max for that, dear. <laughs> I think he felt, assuming, I don't think you can blame Max. But you could blame Lewis. Hill. Button, Chandock, Brundle, Crofty, Horner, Wheatley, Marco. All blame Lewis. Could you? Because. It's kind but, of but, could you, but would you blame Lance either? Who, who's, well, who's got his DRS open? He's going for a lap too. So therefore, he, he's entitled he to. Over. I think he looked over. He knew he was there. So Stroll had just finished a lap though. So you can see Stroll oh, had right, just finished okay. a lap doing oh, a 21 right. 7. Max was starting a lap. Yeah. Um, right. In, well, in which case, then Stroll should back out. Well, look, if no. he just finished the lap. Oh, he's not backing out. No, he's not. He's going on for a run. So. Yeah. If he's if he's finished a the lap, then he backs out. But the DRS is wide open all the way through that straight. I guess the way the stewards will look at it, though, did Max? Max didn't lock up. He was still in the position. He wasn't running out wide when he made contact. So in that sense, you probably have to give a bit more space I, I to the car it, on the inside. That's I, the I think it was 50. <laughs> De Resta validating Max. Max didn't lock up. Uh, he was all right in an all right position. So you've got to give more space to Max. Now, well, the car, Max, it's, it's borderline whether he was halfway alongside. Borderline whether he... Uh, the right to that space or whether actually you're in a you're in a position where you've not made it halfway alongside it's your responsibility to back out of that situation because you've not earned the right to that space the other car is entitled to that racing line around that corner because you're not in a position which means he has to leave you that racing room that is the way the rules of engagement work but de resta i think is he in the brundle stable of uh, fluffing Max Verstappen, who knows? 50. I think it was a little bit careless from both drivers. I think it was an, an I, assumption from Max that he thought yeah. he was just going to let him by, and it was also Lance, knowing the car was there, just turning in. So, so they, uh, racing, for me, it's 50 50. So, racing points say that Lance Stroll was doing more than one. 50 50, because Lance, knowing that Max was there, still turned in. Max Verstappen at Silverstone. Did he know that Lewis Hamilton was still there? 
Yes, he did, clearly. Did he turn in? Yes, he did. And did the commentators say, well, naturally, it's 50-50? Hmm, wasn't a 50-50 split on who was putting the blame on Lewis Hamilton, was it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, they just let me know that. Thank you very much to, to Will Hicks uh, for that. Yeah, he had, the best, he had the best from the juice of the tyres. Yeah. And, uh, and he was going for another lap. It was pretty the clear. The stewards are looking at this, and it is now under investigation. Let's get a reaction from Otmar Safnau on the Racing Point pit wall. Otmar, what do you make of it? Well, it, it, I don't know, but it looks like Max didn't realise we were doing uh, two quick laps there and uh, shouldn't have been where he was. Does Otmar, like um, Christian from Red Bull, Jonathan from Red Bull, Helmut from Red Bull, do they ins does Otmar incite the crazies by going, Max nearly killed Lance, eh? He nearly killed Lance. That was 51G. He, should, he could be in hospital now. Did, did, did they incite the crazies like that? No, he didn't. Let's have a listen to him. How common is it for cars to do two quick laps like that? Well, we, we often do it, and other teams do too, so it's, it's pretty common. I mean, you don't always do push, cool, push, cool, push. Sometimes you push twice but just you, to see what the tire's like. When we were looking at here, Otmar, obviously we were looking at it from on board as well. It's kind of 50 50 in a sense that Lance doesn't give Max enough room either when he's got a proportion of the car kind of alongside him at the same point when they come on the brakes. Lance doesn't see him there, Paul. Yeah, but he knows he's there because he's looked at I don't think early, he does. On the, early on in the straight. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't talked to him yet. That is his had he known he was there, he wouldn't have turned in. What the f*** is wrong with him? Is that what a, In that situation, would, would Lance be informed that Max is likely to be alongside him by his race engineer? Would, would there be communication from the pit wall at that time? No, no, not, not that quickly. Um, okay. What you've just heard there is F1 TV have interjected with Max Verstappen's onboard audio. Lance Stroll on his onboard audio says he wasn't aware that Max Verstappen was there. Do they interject with that? Or do they just play you the one side that they want you to hear? We'll find out as we go through this. Um, and we, we didn't anticipate uh, Max to go there. I mean, what was the purpose? You're shaking your head every time you look at this, Otmar. Yeah, because it's just ridiculous. For what gain? Well, no gain whatsoever for either car in the end. Christian Horner's also shaking his head, as you can see yeah, on, on the replay I, there. I can assure you, Crofty, 100% Max knew that Lance was there. 100%. There's no way he doesn't know Lance is there. But Lance doesn't know Max is there. It's pretty simple to me. Okay, at Silverstone, Lewis Hamilton 100% knew that Max was there. Max 100% knew that Lewis was there. They are in a race. Lewis Hamilton has made it almost halfway along, well, sorry, almost fully alongside Max, more than halfway alongside Max, on the braking zone to the corner. That affords Lewis Hamilton racing room around that corner. Max Verstappen chops across, trying to beat Hamilton to the apex, trying to force Hamilton to back out. That's what happens. Max knew he was there and knew what he was trying to do. And the sport doesn't identify that. Oh, Mar, we thank you very much for coming on uh, straight away and for, for your reaction. Let's just hear, as we look at the stewards there, uh, Tim Mayer uh, will be leading the stewards uh, for this week. Vitaly Petrov, uh, who you can see third from the left, second from the right, uh, on your screen. Well, they've got some decisions to make, and Max Verstappen has just said this over the team radio while we were talking to Otmar Safna. Ben, is this guy blind? What the f*** is wrong with him? What a... If Max... So that's the second time they play you that? If, if Lance didn't know he was there... 
Lance did know he was there because Lance let him by. Well, Max let Lance by at turn 14 and has tried to take the slipstream to start his lap. So that's not right. And Lance would be looking in his mirror before Max had pulled out, and that was earlier on in the straight. So uh, I, I kind of agree with that. I think it's 50 50 in that sense. Um, I think. Also, Lance maybe could have given him a little bit more space just on turning at the apex. Um, and the, sh the stewards will be the ones that have all the evidence. They'll listen to the team radios. They'll probably look at the drivers on board to see if they've actually looked in the mirror in the sense. But Could Max have given Lewis a bit more space at Silverstone? Was that what you were told? Or were you told, oh, everybody knows you don't put a wheel up the inside at Cops. Lewis didn't hit the apex. That's what you were told. They were the lies that you were told. You know, we're not going to point fingers at anyone. It's unnecessary, but you, you can't put it completely on one person at the moment. No, no, you, you can't blame one person. Uh, you know, there, there's a absolutely Lance knows he's there. Uh, Max has got a significant part alongside. And, you know, how much blame was put on Lewis Hamilton? And like I say, Max situation in Portugal, it was borderline whether Max was entitled to that, that room on the inside. Lewis was definitely entitled to that room on the inside at Silverstone. Look at the difference. You have, you share that responsibility in each car for each other's safety. And... You share that responsibility in each car. What responsibility did they put on Max Verstappen for his role at Silverstone? What responsibility did they put on Max Verstappen for his role in what he did at Silverstone? Respect, and uh, you know that was clearly lacking from both of their, both of the drivers in that circumstance. But one thing I would say is that they're... how much respect did Max Verstappen show Lewis Hamilton by trying to chop across him at Silverstone? learn in this track not just in terms of where it goes and where the grip is also how you race on it and that's a prime example of drivers learning a corner in a racing sense uh, how how it unfolds and throughout the history of the sport we can give countless examples of overtaking maneuvers at cops corner inside or outside and drivers know it's an overtaking opportunity Red Bull like to present to the world that everybody knows you don't put a wheel up the inside at cops. Lies. Lying to incite the crazies with misinformation. Disinformation. Purposefully lying to condition minds. For the narrative. They've now learned you can't just turn in if there's a car on the inside and also the car on the inside. No you can't just turn in if there's a car on the inside. Knows that the car on the outside probably will have to turn in at some point. You, someone has to give up. Someone has to yield for this not to happen in the race come Sunday. And even if Lance was gone, for and Max doesn't like yielding. <laughs> oh, but Max has come along with this elbows out, uncompromising style is how it gets described. The kiddies like that. That's not okay. You need respect for your fellow competitor. You need to respect the rules of engagement of the sport. For another lap as well, you've still got a duty to see what's around you as well, haven't you? Yeah, you because it's now... A duty to see what's around you. Did anybody say that about Max Verstappen at Silverstone 2021? Session's ruined. So, you know, you've got that responsibility. At the end of the day, it is just a free practice session and you don't want to crash out. But that duty applies in the race as well. Out of it. Uh, Chris Mann says 100% Max's fault for that. Strolls in front, clearly on another fast lap. Max needed to back out far sooner. Here they are going through what people say in the comments section. Professor Tim Owens, 50-50. Ridiculous by Max. Stroll had the line penalty for Max there, please. Utter stupidity. So this is a professor, he calls himself. 100% Max's fault, right? Now, I've not said it's 100% Max's fault, have I? I'm the one that's saying it's borderline. Was he halfway alongside? Potentially, he may have earned the right to the inside line at the corner. The stupidity of it was, it's a practice session here. You don't need to be doing that sort of thing.
were it in a race, it's 50-50 as to whether he had, had earned the right. Lewis Hamilton, it wasn't 50-50. Lewis Hamilton had earned the right. Um, let's carry on with a few more. Uh, Graham Triggs, big penalty for Max. You can't go around causing such an incident. I'm sorry, says Reese, but that's fully Max Verstappen's fault. There's no way turn one will be an overtaking spot in the race. <laughs> Somebody in the comment section. 100% Max's fault. There's no way turn one will be an overtaking spot in the race. This is the level of people's comment comments in the comment section. They know nothing. OK, there's no reason why turn one cannot be an overtaking position. If you can get your car side by side with the other car before or by the braking zone, you're entitled to the inside line around there. The car on the outside has to give you space. It has to yield. So, oh, there's no way that will be an overtaking position in the race. Utter, utter rubbish. Utter rubbish. I'm not even going to go into the race to find out if there were any overtakes. That opinion is rubbish, but people like to come to the comment section and make opinions like that. Rubbish. He's vilifying Max there, all right, blaming Max. But that reasoning is, is just diabolical. And this is, again, an example of people who don't know anything about the sport, but like to voice their opinion about it. So it was just daft. That corner is one line, hence people exceeding track limits constantly. Silly move in practice, uh, especially. Uh, Max is getting the blame from I the think fans who are reacting that, straight away. It's that assumption from Max that he thought. If there's two cars going into a corner together and you can't take the ideal line, you have to adjust your line and your speed so that you go around that corner and remain on track. Just because you can't take your optimum line at your optimum speed doesn't mean that corner. Oh, we can't go around that corner now. Well, you still can. Two cars side by side. You just have to go slower and on different lines. That's the way it works. Lance was going to let him go and that he had finished his lap. And that was that. But, he, you know, with Lance carrying on a, on a fast lap, it, it changes the situation. Do, and, um, do, do we hear... On the team radio from time to time, uh, guys, Max Verstappen assuming a right because he's maybe in a faster car over some other drivers out on the track. I'm not, I'm not trying to say Max is, is an arrogant driver or an arrogant person. He's, he's not. But This is what we get from everybody. Oh, I'm not saying anything nasty about Max. I'm not saying anything nasty about Max. I'm not saying anything nasty about Max. Right, well, he, he is arrogant. We can see from the way that Max conducts himself, he's arrogant. We can just hear what he said on the radio, the guy's attitude. We've seen the way he treats other people, what kind of character Max Verstappen is. But I'm not saying anything nasty about Max. I'm not saying anything nasty about Max. I'm not saying anything nasty about Max. They all do it. Are there times that Max will think, no, he is going to get out of the way because I'm in a faster car? Yes. Because they always do. He's not my race. I'll just jump out of the way of Max. In fact, I'll roll the red carpet out and wave him through. Perhaps some of that goes on. But um, look, I, th I honestly think it's, it's drivers learning the track still. And uh, although now they know where to break on the racing line, they now know that is a proper pinch point uh, when you've got two cars going in there fighting each other for track space so right. Paul's just had another look at this uh, there's a proportion of the car up the inside so if this was a race and where they made contact I would probably say in the sense I know it's practice I would say given at the point of the corner they made the contact Stroll should have gave Lance it, Stroll should have given Max a little bit more space on the inside ok we know that Max barely made it halfway alongside Stroll. Maybe did, maybe didn't. With that in mind, that doesn't. If he didn't make it halfway alongside, that doesn't entitle to him to racing room on the inside. If he did, it does. Deresta is saying it was Stroll's responsibility to give him room. What about Silverstone 2021? Lewis was almost fully alongside. Who has said it was Max's responsibility to leave Lewis Hamilton racing room? 
And racing room isn't just a car width. It is room between you and the other vehicle. Maintaining that space. Lewis Hamilton didn't leave Max Verstappen racing room at Brazil 2021, did he? He didn't leave him the width of one car at Turn 4 at Brazil 2021. Had he have done so, it would have been a crash. Lewis Hamilton saw that car on the inside of him, saw where it was travelling and kept his line and adjusted his line. He drove off track to ensure that that car, that where it was travelling, wasn't going to run into him. Oh, but uh, I left him a car width and he still ran into me. Well, that's not what he did. Abu Dhabi, lap 58, illegal lap 58, turn five. Did Lewis Hamilton leave Max Verstappen a car width at turn five? Oh, no. He saw Max Verstappen a car width away from the curb at turn five and still remained wide of him. Because there wasn't the car's width there and he was There's squeezing. not a car's width for the, him to go there and he's not locked up to hit him at that point. In a practice session, I don't know how they'll look at that. Yeah, I was going to say, was do a, they apply the same logic? If that, was a, if that was taken in that sense, there would be no penalty on Max's side there, I think, because he's he's got some space there. It's like I said before, in a, in a free practice session, both parts... No penalty for Max. But they penalised Lewis. They vilified Lewis. Ten-second penalty for Lewis. Two penalty points on the licence for Lewis. But no penalty for Max. Parties have to take more care. It's not a race. Yeah. So at the end of the day, what's the big deal in A for Max backing out of it or Lance letting the faster car go by that's starting a lap? So it, both of them have that responsibility. This, this it's is just a the, practice session. So this is the lead ah, up to it. This the, is okay. how Lance is now ahead of Max. Max locked up a little bit, stamped on the brakes. Well, no, he, yeah, Lance, he was... Lance is on a flying lap, remember, here. So Max would have seen that he was on a flying lap. The automatic assumption might have been that Lance then is going to back off because he's now on a charging lap or a slowdown lap, but he's not. Otmar Safnau told us he was going for two flying laps. After seeing that again, that, that on board with Matt, it's, it's unfair to say it's 100% Max's fault. It's, he has got enough of the car alongside him, and uh, I think there was a little bit of beef left over from turn 14. Whatever happened there as well, I think Max might have felt a little bit aggrieved in that he, I don't think he was aware that Lance had done a lap, Yeah, was on a lap, and was starting another lap. And yeah. I just think he felt, oh, you've overtaken me, even though I was like preparing a nice gap in front to start my lap. Still and now you've overtaken me, and then you turn in on me. So I think that he was quite uh, annoyed about what had happened in turn 14. Well, but either way, it doesn't matter. I say it again. Free practice. <laughs> Give each other space. It's, you know, you're not going to see football teams in training defenders putting in sliding tackles no. to, to your star striker. It's a good analogy. Well, you know, I, I have seen it a couple of times, but it's not what you want to see every Probably Friday. doesn't come out well. <laughs> even that, yeah. It never works out well, that one, to be fair. And, and, and I'm glad we had Otmar on just to clear up that, that Lance was on two flying laps. And I think that, that's, that's the key that here. It doesn't matter, though. He still had a bit of the car running yeah. inside. Yeah, but, what, but I'm saying from Max's point of view, it's an easy assumption to make. Well, look, he's... he's it doesn't matter. He still had a bit of the car on the inside, says De Resta. Max had the racing line at Silverstone. It doesn't matter. Hamilton had his car on the inside. Who had the racing line at Portugal? Is the racing line being talked about? Well, as De Resta just told you, it doesn't matter. Max had his car on the inside. Lewis had his car more alongside on the inside. He'd earned that right to that space, to that corner. He's come past me. He's on a flying lap. He's only going to do one flying lap. He's now going to back off. But even if he wasn't, he can still do what yeah. he was doing to practice and overtake in the race. And he still had a proportion of the car that I can't agree with me up the inside of him. Is it, at some point, if you turn in, and you see that the car is, is not getting out of the way, that there's a car there and you're turning into a high-speed corner, that's a risk. It is. And even if, you don't, even if you feel like the car on your inside shouldn't be there, he is there. 
the car is there. So if you turn in, you make that quick decision in the car. If I turn in, we're going to crash. Uh, Ruby T. Uh, <laughs> Let's just uh, go back for that. Even if you feel like the car on your inside shouldn't be there, he is there. The car is there. So if you turn in, you make that quick decision in the car. If I turn in, we're going to crash. Uh, <laughs> if I turn in, we're going to crash. What happened at Silverstone? What happened at Silverstone? Who was arrogant in expecting the other guy to have to back out for him? Who was trying to bully? Uh, Ruby uh, D, not the biggest Max Verstappen fan, but I'm going to give him the benefit here. No way Stroll didn't see him there. Um, million percent Max's fault, says H2. Joey wasn't even properly alongside Max. He's not a kid anymore. He's in his sixth season. The excuses need to stop here. Keep your comments coming in. Well, that stage, 2020, Max was in his sixth season. And people were still having to make excuses for his dangerous driving in his sixth season. 2021 was his seventh season. Oh, he's the best you've ever seen. Seventh season and, and has to be gifted a world championship. And then, since then, there's been an, an illegal car that's been light years faster than everything else. Oh, he's the best you've ever seen. Radio, it's fooling some of you. It's fooling some of you. Some of you like it. Hashtag Sky F1. Uh, whatever we think, though, doesn't matter. The stewards are going to look at it and they will uh, analyse an awful lot, I'm sure, before reaching whatever decision they reach. Right, Ted, uh, down to you, because the thing here, Hello. Ted, yep. still got the red flag. We have. Yeah, we had another red flag previously. So th this is pretty much the end of any decent long-run data that we're going to get today. Well, the teams are going to try again. What have we got, 12 minutes left, something yeah. like that? So, uh, yeah, I mean, do, do you think it had any effect that Max was kind of angry? He seems to be. He seems to have been angry the whole session. He, he called Carlos Sainz a name, didn't he, well, earlier on? So he, he, shouldn't, he, he shouldn't be angry. I just think maybe he was already sort of in a sort of bit of a fighty, a fighty Max mood, but uh, I don't know whether that made any difference to him. Max Verstappen being in a fighty Max mood. That's rare, isn't it? So rare. But, uh, he's obviously determined to try and get his run because they have had been compromised with all these red flags. Then he went and caused another one. But you might see on the timing screen uh, that uh, George Russell is seven yes. at the moment. And if that raises your eyebrows, then uh, I can explain it. It's effectively because um, he was one of the only cars uh, who actually did flying laps on option tyres, on the red tyres, before yeah. the red flag came out. Obviously, we saw uh, Hamilton and Bottas do that, and uh, Russell did that as well, whereas m many other people have been uh, not been going for some quality runs uh, and have been doing uh, more race stuff. So that kind of explains it. But that is a good... Uh, that is a good performance. As Williams say it's more a sort of phasing of what everybody is doing rather than uh, they've found a massive bit of performance. But I did see the new owners turn up uh, in the break, Crofty. Uh -huh. Matthew, Matthew Savage and James Matthews and uh, Stephanie Gunnello, I believe, from uh, Doralton Capital. They turned up and they were watching from a grandstand by the side of the track. Ah, uh, because so, the fans uh, are here. They are here. So the new owners uh, are in the house. But I've just had uh, some... Uh, uh, communication from Red Bull saying that uh, Max isn't angry about the whole thing since he's got and back to the garage. So, just Max isn't angry, but we've heard the radio message twice <laughs> because they played it to us twice. Twice have they played us Lance's version of events? Just That's a thought, then. If you saw them watching in the grandstand, I'm assuming then that they won't be going anywhere near the team this weekend. Because you're not allowed to go into a grandstand and then go and join the team because of red. Right, that's probably the most you know the the most part of it. It might go on for a little bit, but you can see two relatively similar incidents: the Silverstone incident in 2021. The car on the inside had a greater claim to the track space around that corner because it had earned it. It was almost fully alongside going into the braking zone of that corner. In the Portugal incident, well, the car 
borderline whether it made it along, halfway alongside or not. Look at the way they describe it. Look at who they put the blame on. Look at the way that they vilify one guy in a situation who was the wrong guy to vilify. And yet the other guy, in other situation, oh, it's more of a 50-50. Oh, actually, the guy on the inside will make excuses for him. This is the narrative you're given. This isn't the truth, is it? You look at them two incidents and you compare what you said about them, what you've spoken. I've done loads of videos breaking down what Sky Sports did to Lewis Hamilton at Silverstone. What Red Bull did to incite the hatred which caused racial abuse of Lewis Hamilton due to Silverstone and the way that that was presented. And this is what the sport does. This is what it does. It's incited hatred. It's created the conflict. It's created two warring factions. That is what has been created. Simple, honest commentary, a simple breakdown and evaluation of what is truly going on can mean that none of that conflict exists. All it takes is to evaluate it correctly, to explain to fans using the right technology, using the slow-mos, using the different cam camera angles, using telemetry. Look at what they're doing here. This driver is doing this. This driver is doing that. This is the relative locations of the cars. These are the inputs of the drivers. This driver is entitled to this room. This driver needs to do this at this stage. This driver either needs to yield or he has earned the right. The car on the outside, need, he has earned the right to that corner because the other guy is expected to yield or he has to leave the other car space and stay wide, keeping wide of that car as those two cars go around that corner. That is the rules of engagement. It's easy to explain to fans. It's easy to do it. And yet they don't. Instead, they incite the conflict. And this is why we have Formula One social media now. This is why we have the types of comments that we see in the comments section. People with their opinions and those opinions are formed due to the education they've received. They think that their opinions are valid because they've heard that being spoken about by experts of the sport, so-called experts of the sport. So therefore, they think that when they repeat it, they're right. Garbage in, garbage out. You feed people with bullshit, people regurgitate the bullshit. This is the damage that this show is doing to individuals and to society. Anyway, that'll do on this one. Thank you for your time.